You are listening to Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. Let's jump first into our cryptocurrencies as we always start. And we start with what? Bitcoin, which is a booming up as we look at how it has started the week. This is the 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin chart in the last 24 hours, up 1.85%. You can see on the two-day chart how things really started cranking back on Monday the 16th. That was Monday, Tuesday, and things, of course, just continuing to go up, 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 up. Very nice. Again, that was the 16th, the 18th, the 20th. Uh, over Sunday, you really saw it starting to accelerate even more. That was Sunday, Monday, and then you got... Monday, Tuesday, as things just tearing up. Now we can see over the last uh, few hours how things have sort of peaked and pulled back a little bit as we look at that 195 minute chart. But again, as we look, let's zoom into the weekly chart, <clears throat> take a close look at it. You can see how Bitcoin bottomed and then we started seeing green candles. Now, when we've seen green candles, not always perfect because you can see a green spinning top here and a green spinning top here. But if you notice, when you start getting up movement in Bitcoin uh, and you don't have any movement down on the bottom to start it off with, it does tend, well, there's a little bit there, none here. But uh, as you see, it's starting to take off, particularly for the course of this year. We saw where things bottom last December and starting in early January, Bitcoin turned around. But every time it popped up, it pulled back substantially. <clears throat> and this last one pulled back even more than even where it started moving up. So again, this last one, it has been slowly but surely had a real questionable week here back starting the 9th of October. But since then, just a boom. And now what about Ethereum. Well, this is the first week where Ethereum shows a decent green candle with no bottom movement on that weekly chart. You can see on the two-day chart how it just has been booming up since Saturday as, as it really, really started to take off. Now, we look at the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, and we can see how it was just sliding around forever. Last week started showing some green and of course, this week popping up nicely for today alone, up 9.68%. Now, again, this is an ETF uh, that is traded. So it is not the 24-hour-a-day chart like we see with Bitcoin and like we see with Ethereum that we've been looking at. Now, again, as you guys know, on the channel, chartingwealth.com, we track what? XBTF. And, of course, that is the Bitcoin ETF that, of course, just reports during market hours. So it had a lot of catching up to do. That's why it was bounding up so much. Now, let's move from cryptocurrencies into commodities. Take a look at a few things. First thing we'll start with is the U.S. gas fund. Going down hard three weeks, sort of stopping there that week, beginning the 9th of October. Last week and this week push through that prior trend uh, line as this week starts. Um, again, after sort of sliding sideways, it is down, though, for the day, 2.58%. So not quite sure. You can see where things really blew off steam the last two days. It was Monday and Tuesday. That gave us the doji on the two-day chart. And, of course, this week starting off as a doji. We move on to wheat down 1.53%. Now, wheat had moved down for many, many weeks, sort of bottom, started to move up last week. Maybe, maybe dying on the vine this week. Soybeans, same kind of thing. It had moved down, then had a great start uh, last week. This week, again, up for the day, 0.49%. But, of course, you can see where on Friday and Monday, heading down, even Tuesday morning, a little bit of light Tuesday afternoon. Lastly, we'll look at copper. Copper still just sort of hanging around, hasn't pushed through the weekly trend line yet, trying to on the two-day chart, has on the half-day, 
And again, remember, copper is used in a lot of manufacturing. And again, with the world economy sort of teetering, problems in the Middle East, problems in Europe, problems with inflation in the U.S., U.K., Western Europe, many places. So again, we'll continue to see how these commodities track as the world deals with some real crises. Lastly, we will go to what I love always to look at, and that is currencies. Look at what's happening with the euro. Euro had gone down for many, many weeks. We've talked over and over about how in mid-July popped up and then just rolled over last week, changing up a little bit as things were flattening out. This week, pushing through that long-standing weekly trend line. Now, for the day, it was down 0.66%, but you can see how it's been pushing up on the half-day chart and the two-day chart, blowing through that prior trend line. So we will go from the euro. Let's take a look at the British pound. Again, same kind of thing, slowing down in its down movement. So we'll keep an eye on the pound as we go forward. What about the Swiss franc? Well, it's going into its third week of up movement in the Swiss franc since it bottomed. Japanese yen, still the yen, just sort of meandering down, just, just sort of in the doldrums still. And lastly, we will take a look at the Canadian dollar. Now, the Canadian dollar, you know, popped up like so many of the other currencies did in July, then rolling over throughout August into September, trying to get a little life, and then rolling back over, heading down. That is where we are with cryptos, commodities, and currencies. Always love once a week to take a good look at what's going on in the world with other things, particularly cryptos, commodities, and currency. So we're to get a good feel for what's happening with real stuff out there. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.